Shalom, everyone, and good evening from Galilee, Israel, and shalom to you, Pastor Barry Stagner from Southern California. How are you doing? I'm doing great on this uh, cool and cloudy uh, Wednesday morning here in Southern California. Beautiful. Good to see you, Amir. You too. By the way, it still says my name, but never mind. Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll talk about it. Later. Anyway, this is a special Q and A uh, that we are having today uh, as authors of this uh, this book, Bible Prophecy: The Essentials. I don't know if Barry, if you have it with you, but this is the book I that do. is about to come out in a few weeks, and the book that is already trending in. Uh, 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 many, you know, uh, lists on, on Amazon and others. Look, uh, let's start with a uh, prayer, Pastor Barry, if you can, and then we'll answer all of your questions. Uh, and some of them, you know, are, I mean, we're going to take questions right now and answer them live. And don't hold any punches. I mean, ask whatever you want. If you have any questions related to this topic, into the content of, of it. So, um, Pastor Barry. Father, we thank you for this opportunity today to uh, talk about the most incredible uh, realities that we experience in our world today, and that is that your word is coming alive. And we thank you for the, the book that you have written and given us, uh, Lord, in your holy word. And Lord, we pray that the insights and information within this book that uh, we have put our hands to Lord, would be a benefit and a blessing to your people. Mm -hmm. And God, and direct your time, or our time right now, we ask. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, uh, folks, uh, throughout COVID, uh, we decided uh, that, and that was throughout 2020 and 2021, we knew that uh, a lot of people can go to churches. We knew that we are also unable to travel. Um, and so what we decided to do is to do uh, or hold every few weeks a question and answers um, broadcast where we got your questions and we answer them, Bible questions, and we answer them as much as we can. And what we decided to do as 2022 entered, we decided to take all those questions, divide them to topics and, 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 and put them all in one very, very helpful um, tool uh, for all of you. Pastor Barry, um, so of course, um, we've got this book, which is answers to your most common questions, but what is the difference between this book and other Q&A books? Well, I think the main thing is that these are the questions that uh, the viewers have asked. And uh, one of the other things I think that's so important about this, Amir, and I was thinking about this uh, over the past couple of days, you know, oftentimes I'll get emails that say, did you say, or when you said, and then it's completely something different than, than what was actually said. And this is a print resource where people can go to and look up by category questions that have been asked that are always making it into any Q&A session, no matter who it is. Uh, that's doing it. So I think that's uh, the main thing that, uh, and the way they're categorized uh, is the main thing that is going to be a help to the reader where they can say, you know, I've always wondered about, you know, some people say modern Israel is not the Israel of the Bible. What does the book have to say about it? And the other thing I think that's important to recognize is that this book is based on scripture. It's not speculation. It's not uh, what we think. It's what the Bible says about these questions that have come up from people uh, who watched the Q&A session. So I think, you know, really, especially in this age of sensationalism and, uh, you know, where so many things are taught that, you know, are just that. They're just sensational. They're speculation. They're not based on uh, passages of Scripture or they're, they're basically coming from eisegesis, inserting somebody's interpretation into a different passage. So this is just straight up Bible. Here's what the Bible says about the questions you have asked. And I think another very unique thing about this book, if I may add, is the fact that it's to every question there, there's two answers. There's an answer of a pastor from California who is a Gentile, and there is an answer of a Jew from Israel. And everyone brings his, his 
knowledge and, and, and angle and perspective, and we complete each other uh, when it comes to that, uh, which is great because, you know, normally when you have an author that answers questions, it's only him. And here you get two for the price of one. <laughs> it's a good Jewish deal, uh, isn't it? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, what I'm saying is that, um, you know, we've been, when we answered those questions, we were thousands of miles apart, but we were in the same page at the, and, and at yeah. the same place theologically, which is exactly why it's so important. Okay, Pastor Barry, um, you are getting now the questions that people are asking. So why don't we go into those and start answering them? Well, I'm actually still waiting for those to come in. Okay. Um, but so before okay, as, uh, I, have, I have a question for you, okay? All right. Um, I don't know why, but a lot of people have no problem going to a shop and buying a, a, clothes, a piece of clothes or going to a, a restaurant and ordering a meal or going to a cafe and ordering a cup of coffee. But uh, when it comes to books, people are angry that they cost money, that they, they cost 10 or $12. And they are even more angry when it's Christians who wrote it because they think that those should be free. Um, what is your answer to this question? Yeah, Amir, I get the same thing. And it's just, it's troubling and a bit confusing, I think, just that, uh, some people will go that way in their thinking, you know, when, uh, you know, it's just the norm. They'll buy uh, some type of uh, other book that they're interested in. But somehow, if you're a Christian author, you're supposed to give the books away. But, uh, you know, the thing about that is, you know, the books cost money and, uh, you know, they have to be edited uh, professionally. They have to be printed. They have to be shipped. They have to be distributed. And then nobody uh, in that line of process uh, is uh, independently wealthy and can do it for free. Uh, the publisher has to be paid. The printer has to be paid. The editor has to be paid. And uh, that's why books cost money. And, you know, Amir, one of the other things is, you know, why are you guys on social media pushing your books? Well, because that's how information is shared today. And uh, what good is it to invest all the money, hours, and everything else into putting a book together and then not let anybody know that it's available? And uh, so, again, you know, I just think we need to, um, you know, just kind of cool our heels a little bit on the critical spirit thing and, and just, you know, recognize, hey, books cost money to make. And uh, so, you know, they have to be sold in order for all the people up and down the line uh, to get paid. So, you know, not a, uh, you know, I mean, think about it, Amir. People pay for their Bibles. Yeah, you know, if I there's if there's any book that ought to be given away. <laughs> but mm -hmm. the paper costs money, the cover costs money, the printing costs money, same type of things, you know. So it's just, you know, uh, I just, I don't quite get it. But, um, hey, we've got a few questions coming in. So if you're ready to jump in, we can do that. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. All right. This comes, comes from uh, Rebecca. And this is a great question. And uh, the question is, how would you define neither cold nor hot, but lukewarm, which Jesus talks about him rejecting those who are lukewarm, in uh, Revelation, is uh, this is specifically about uh, Revelation chapter three with the church at Laodicea? Laodicea. Yes. Are you going to answer that, or are you asking me? Well, I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> How would you des describe lukewarm? Lukewarm. It, it, in fact, um, okay. So first of all, it it reminds me of the. Uh, those people that say, I did this in your name and I did that in your name. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, uh, I never knew you. There's the fact that you are putting on you a, a facade of a Christian, but you're not walking the walk. You're just talking the talk. You're not doing his word. You're just saying it. Uh, this is not, in, it's neither, you're, you're, you may be going to church, but you're not, you know, a Christian or you, all of these things cannot work. They don't go well. I believe that um, God wants an answer. He wants a decision. Just like with Moses, he said, I put before you evil and good, death and life. And he says, choose life. Elijah said the same thing on Mount Carmel. He said, how long will you falter between the two opinions? 
if Baal is God, then worship him. If Jehovah, if the Lord is God, then worship him. That's how we need to uh, deal with. And, and so to, to, to say that you are, by the way, our world is afflicted with that type of mentality because uh, a lot of people will tell you that they're Christians, even in a political realm today. But then their agenda is completely contradicting the word of God, it will be more uh, uh, more along the side of the agenda of the progressive mindset of a world that of 2022. Um, and so lukewarm is an undecided person. Lukewarm is a person that puts on a facade. Lukewarm is a person that is not walking the walk. Lukewarm is a person that is not doing what he needs to do. He's just taking the name and the, uh, of, 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 of something that he's not really into. Um, and he may even feel good about the fact that he's calling himself a Christian. So that's how I see lukewarm. That's how I see lack of decision is not, lack of commitment is something God cannot stand. It's interesting, Amir, what you just said, that they're, uh, they see themselves differently than, than what the truth is. And that's exactly what is written in the letter to the Laodiceans or the church of the Laodiceans. And that is that they think they are rich and have need of nothing. But Jesus said, but you don't know that you're poor, miserable, wretched, blind and naked. And that's a description of their spiritual condition. And, you know, there's another thing about this that I think is interesting, that uh, in all the seven letters, Jesus use some specific application that they would instantly identify with, whether it be cultural or geographical, but he would deal with some particular issue uh, that they could relate to. And that includes the lukewarm state uh, because uh, Laodicea lie in the Lycus Valley, and it was some six miles from Hierapolis, which was in, uh, is in modern day Turkey, and uh, two miles from Colossa, a church that received the letter from Paul. But interesting that from Hierapolis, water would be shipped into Laodicea through open aqueducts. And it started in some geothermal springs up in Turkey that are still there today that are used to make energy. And uh, Colossa had uh, runoff water from snowpack and it was cold water. But when the water made the two mile journey from Colossa and the six mile journey from Hierapolis, both arrived in Laodicea in the same condition. They were lukewarm. And we know hot water is good for purifying. Cold water is good for refreshing. So I think the Lord is saying you're neither purifying your city, nor are you offering the refreshing waters of the word. And uh, your state is much like the water that you drink. It's lukewarm. And, uh, and lukewarm water is not very uh, tasty. And uh, that's why Jesus said, and therefore I'll vomit you out of my mouth. So, you know, I think your assessment is spot on. You know, that's what the Lord was saying. He's yeah, saying, you know, you, you got all these claims and even activities, but, you know, you're, you're not um, something that is truly committed to me or someone that is truly yeah. committed to me. And, and that's, you, you know, know, I was thinking about it today. Um, the enemy is, is using two groups of people the most is using those that are very, very uh, they have almost criminal mindset. And he's also using a lot of people that are very naive. He's using both. The naive people think they can bring peace to the world. They can appease every terrorist. They can. They they are those people that that they really think well, will will hold hands and sing kumbaya. They they think that there can be world peace. We can we can share all the wealth and we can do. These are very naive people. And then there is the very very satanic people, the, the pedophiles and those that are murdering, those that are, you have those with that, the sexual, uh, you know, uh, harassment and rapist and uh, all of those things. You see the, a culture that is encouraging all of these things. So you see on one hand, there's those that are completely having depraved mind. And then you see those that wants to accept everyone. And both are complete opposite on the scale of, of, of personality. This is a very naive person, whereas this is a very, you know, he has a criminal mindset, but he's using both of them. And I, and I think that 
unless we are determined, and this is why maybe we need to be wise as what? As a serpent. serpent. And also very gentle as doves. Gentle as dove. We, as believers, we must be very, very gentle and we must, but not naive and not fall into this trap of this world and the ruler of this world. And so this is also, you know, don't be lukewarm. Uh, in a way, you know, you have to make up your mind. Where are you in this thing? And because both sides that uh, I just talked about, um, whether you're with that depraved mindset or you're that naive one, both of them ends up with a terrible outcome. Um, whereas if you're not, a, you know, making a decision to follow the Lord and to recognize the word of God as the only authority, then you know, you will feel great about, oh, you know, I want peace. You will feel great about, I want to do this. But eventually you'll end up literally working for the enemy. So, yeah. All right. There's a few questions uh, regarding accessing the book or finding it. And um, Gina yeah. asks, are they only available in Southern California? Uh, the book is available online through Amazon. And uh, someone asked about how to order it. You can look up my name or Amir's name, and you can order there. Uh, it is available, as Lori Ann asked, as an ebook. You can pre order as an ebook as well. And Glenn asked, is there an audio version of the book? And the answer is yes, there is. Uh, Amir uh, yes. has done the audio portion of his answers, and I have read my answers. And um, so you get on the January 3rd. Yeah, you get you get our voices answering our answers, so uh, it's cool. I think yes. So, yeah, absolutely. There's uh, all versions of the book will be available on January third. Everything is ready to go. Beautiful. And uh, okay, and, I have uh, a question. I have a question for you because uh, a lot of people accuse us for pushing uh, purchases on Amazon. They they claim that Amazon is evil. Why are you doing that? Blah blah blah. And I have my answer, but I, I think you also know the answer. And the funny thing, they're writing those complaints on an Apple uh, device, which is <laughs> an, an anti-Semitic. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you why don't yeah. you give them the reason for that? Because look, we're not in in love with Amazon. I'm not a best friend of Jeff Bezos, and I'm not into his whatever he supports. But I can tell you that I'm also not in love with with uh, Tim Cook, but I still use iPhone and I have MacBook yeah. in front of me. And the fact that I have it, it's because I take advantage of it. It's not because I support them uh, at all, you know, but I let me tell you also, Barry, can you explain to people once and for all, why is it important that we ask them to buy it online before the launch day? Because People are asking, why should I do that? Well, when you're doing that, you're actually, it's a double service to the Lord. And, and tell them why. Well, I think, you know, that uh, argument that you're making, you know, that Amazon is this or that or Apple is this or that. You know, if we're going to use that approach, we have to broaden it out into everything. And then therefore you shouldn't go to a grocery store that sells booze or you know, if you're going to use that type of thinking, this is the platform that uh, books are sold on today. And, um, you know, the largest the, bookstore the, on planet Earth. Yes, absolutely. The world's first trillion dollar company. So, you know, they are the power broker, so to speak, in uh, in book sales. No question about it. But I think the important thing is that the pre-orders on Amazon are reported to all of the, uh, you know, brick and mortar stores. Uh, to put them, and that's what they'll use to determine whether or not they'll put the book actually on the shelf. And I think that's why uh, we so frequently are asking you to help us uh, reach those certain plateaus that uh, are almost a guarantee to make it onto Walmart shelves, onto Target shelves, into Barnes and Noble. And, um, you know, th these are, are just broadening the, the scope of reach because these are things that people want to know. And, uh, you know, everybody out there realizes, man, this world is a mess. 
and things are headed in a crazy direction, where are their answers uh, to these things? And, you know, we, we uh, specifically chose a word that has become very popular uh, in these last two years, and that is what's essential. And Bible prophecy is essential to understanding where the world is going. Exactly. And uh, that's the question people want to know. So we want to see it get into as many uh, platforms as possible, not just online, but uh, we'd like to see it on the shelf in Target. And um, and I think, Amir, you've run into Revealing Revelation in a couple of airport bookstores, which is right. a pretty big deal. That's the, that's the thing. And let me, let me add to it that um, there is a system in the book world. It's called BookScan. And mm -hmm. all the big all the big vendors such as Amazon report to Bookscan. Bookscan is the system that all the shops and distributors they're looking at. If they see that the book is trending before it's released, let's say if the release date's January 3rd, and by December 1st, it's already sold uh, in high numbers, they say we want that book. This book has a right. great potential. And this is how Operation Yoktan, my first uh, uh, um, fiction, that's how we made it not only to bestsellers list, but also to every store you can think of. But then came Revealing Revelation. And this was the first time you had in, in Hobby Lobby, um, uh, Target, uh, 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 Walmart, and Barnes & Noble on their shelves, prophecy book about revelation in so many places people have never seen this is not this uh, you know type of christian books of, of motivational speakers this was pure teaching of the bible and that's why that book was a sensational success because tons of non-believers bought it and were exposed for yeah. the first time to the book of revelation and this is exactly the purpose, you know, when we our our job in this world is to tell people about the Lord. It's not just to make our life as Christians nice. So we buy from only Christian bookstores and we only buy from Christian vendors and Christian uh, food distributors. And, and the, yeah, it's important to support one another. But we when it comes to the gospel and to answers to the people's questions about this whole world, <laughs> Our job is to go and tell people about it. And so let's make it very clear. Tons of people will not walk into a Christian bookstore and buy a book. They're non-Christians. They're not interested in it. But when they walk right by in Barnes & Noble or in Target or Walmart uh, and they see a book, they ask themselves, what is it? They pick up the book and they read uh, some of the, And then they said, oh, I'll take it. That's what happened. And so this is a wonderful, creative way to evangelize to people and give them a source of peace once they understand the answers to the big questions in this world. And so we're, look, the book, the book costs the same, whether you buy it before or after the launch day. But when you get it before, you make a greater impact because mm -hmm. that is how Big stores will determine if they t get it or not. Online, it's easy, but people don't go online to buy a Christian book, a store, unless they're Christians, a Christian book, unless they're. Right. Uh, but if they walk into to do some shopping in Target and they walk by the bookshelves and they see it, they're exposed to it. And we have hundreds, if not thousands, of, of, of cases like that with our previous books. So when we ask you to pre order it now, before the launch day, which is a month from now, a few weeks from now, that's why. Be part of our effort to reach out to the unsaved. And you'll get the book on the same day anyway. You'll pay the same price anyway. But if you yeah. purchase it a few weeks before, you made a great difference in the way those stores will order it. So we, it's a great win. We take evil evil corporations such as Amazon and such as Target, and we bring the gospel into them. <laughs> I mean, they're dominated by all the trash of this world. Why not giving people the gospel through that? Why not making a presence there rather than, you know, running away from it? So I'm just saying, you know, it's up to you guys, but there is a big reason behind it. 
And the reason is reaching out to the unsaved. And this is why we ask you to get one or two copies and pre-order it and give it to people later on. And you, you will expose many more to that thing. Yeah, and Amir, you know, thinking as you were sharing, there's a old story about a woman, an elderly woman who used to sit on her front porch, and uh, every night she would close the evening in prayer, and she lived next door to an atheist, and uh, it just had him fuming uh, every single evening. He'd hear her out there praising God and giving thanks uh, for all that he has done for her, and then one night he hears her pray, Lord, you know, I don't have any food. You know, there's nothing in my refrigerator and my cupboards are bare. So I ask you to provide for me. And I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. And so the man thought, okay, I'm going to teach this lady a lesson. And he went out and bought groceries and uh, snuck uh, up to her front door and placed the two bags of groceries there and rang the doorbell and ran. And, um, you know, the, the woman comes out and she sees these bags of groceries and she immediately starts praising the Lord and giving thanks to God uh, for his provision. And then this atheist pops out from behind the bushes and says, your God didn't buy these groceries. I bought these groceries. He had nothing to do with it. And the woman starts to laugh and praise the Lord even louder. And she says, thank you, God, for this provision. I just didn't know you were going to use the devil to provide it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> God can use anything. And, you know, Amir, I think what you said is so important, you know, about uh, the this uh, secular uh, 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 storefronts that are, are potentially going to carry the book. Because, you know, people are, are worried out there and they're concerned about where the world is going. And uh, you're right. They would never in a million years go online and uh, look up these kind of things. But if they stumble onto it, into the store. You never know. Somebody may have been sharing uh, what the world is headed for uh, with them, and they can have a resource uh, there in their hands uh, to look to it and uh, find answers that are found in Scripture. So a very, very important, uh, I think, point. I think the good made. thing is that in this book, we don't just write references. We quote the whole portion that we talk That's about. Right. So it, it says, answers to your most common questions and and it talks about Israel, the church, the rapture, the tribulation, the millennium, the great white throne judgment, and heaven. The whole thing. And I know that um, quite a few Christians don't even know much about this. So this is yeah. not just for non-believers. It's not just for non-believers. It's for all of those people that go to churches and nobody's teaching them about Bible prophecy at all. And so this is a wonderful way to get an understanding of all these topics. And again, all of that is backed up with scriptures. This is what it's all about. It's not our answers. Yeah. It's the Bible's answers. That's right. And um, we're just voicing them in our own way, in English and in Hebrewish. <laughs> Hebrew and English. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah. And, and, you know, Amir, it's just it's uh, interesting that uh, one of the editors of the book made the comment that, you know, even though there's two people answering, it's not redundant. Uh, we both uh, present kind of the complete package of an answer uh, between the two. So it's not like, you know, uh, you're going to read my answer and then you're going to say the same thing. It's just uh, because of our two perspectives and, um, you know, and the one yeah. Bible we both study you know, the answers are, are pretty well-rounded, I think. And that was one of the uh, yeah. things that uh, one who participated in editing editing, editing the book, excuse me, uh, had to say. So, you know, again, you know, there are, are questions in the book that have multiple interpretations. And one of the questions that just came up, Amir, you and I were just talking about this last night. And uh, one of the questions that came up, there's no name associated with it, but uh, the question is, multiple teachers are now advocating that Israel is not <clears throat> represented by the fig tree. Is it? And um, I think we both share this. Oh, I don't think. I know we both share uh, the same belief regarding that particular issue. But, you know, one of the things I think that's so important to highlight is that, you know, there are people that are scholarly and wonderful, God-fearing, Jesus-loving, Christ-proclaiming believers who see things differently. And, uh, you know, this is one of those things that kind of makes me scratch my head because one of the first thing that comes to mind to those who say uh, the fig tree in the Olivet Discourse doesn't have anything to do with Israel. 
Well, my question is, then what does it mean? What is it associated with? Why would Jesus use that? And, you know, I'll, I'll throw out an answer first. You know, one, I think one of the mistakes that a lot of Bible interpreters make is that they look at Luke and they look at Matthew, but they don't look at Mark's record of the Passion Week. Because in Mark, we're told the day after the triumphal entry, Jesus encountered the fruitless fig tree. And, you know, the uh, nation of Israel is represented as a fruitless fig tree in Jeremiah 8.13. Exactly. And then, you know, the next day, Mark's gospel says, the next day they came upon the same fruitless fig tree that represents unbelieving Israel. And, and the observation was made, look, it's dried up from the roots. And that represents the pulling up of the nation of Israel from their national homeland. Exactly. Now, the next day, Wednesday of the Passion Week, Jesus says, now learn this lesson from the fig tree, not a fig tree, not fig trees in general. This wasn't a horticultural statement. He's saying, learn the lesson from the fig tree we just encountered over the last two, two days. You got the same speaker talking to the same audience about the same fig tree. And that fig tree is representative of the nation of Israel. And he said, when you see that fig tree budding, you know that summer is near. And this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. And I think that there is ample Old Testament evidence. Hosea and Joel both use the same word picture for the nation of Israel uh, being a fig tree. And yes. uh, so, you know, I think we can make the argument that um, the Bible supports that position. And I think a lot of people just make an argument that, well, no, it isn't. But never well, get around to what it does. Exactly. Because uh, it has to mean something. It has to be something. And then they, they say, well, the Bible says, look at the fig tree and the other trees. So why why mentioning the fig tree separately from the other trees if it's just about trees or something? Exactly. But I will tell you also, Barry, that a lot of people forget that Israel is likened to three major uh, trees, to the, to the olive, to the... Um, uh, to the vine and to the fig. Mm -hmm. The olive and the vine are spiritual and religious privileges of Israel in the Old Testament that now Christians coming to faith in Christ, Gentiles coming to faith in Christ, they are now grafted into that. They, you know, it's the same God that we all have. It's the same forefathers that we all have. It's the same word of God in the Old Testament that we all share. So, that's why we can say that you have been grafted into the olive tree. You have been grafted into the vine. But never, never it says you have been grafted into the fig tree. The fig tree has been and always will be just Israel because it's the national privileges. It's their land. It's their capital. It's everything that is connecting them as a nation to the land. And this is exactly why it's important that Jesus said, that generation that will see the fig tree. It's not that the Christians will be the fig tree. The Christians will see the fig tree. And that generation shall not pass away. Look, I see a great assault on the hope of our soon rapture. And the assault is uh, coming from so many directions. Uh, from, from outside, but also from within the church. After they try to change everything that God says about family, about gender, about so many other things, now they want to take away, or the enemy wants to take your, your even the one thing that is left for you, it's, it's the hope of our soon rapture to be with the Lord. Israel is the single most end time, the, the most important end time sign. Absolutely. I mean, and, and, and so it was so important that Jesus had to <clears throat> pause in his answer. And give them a parable. By the way, it's a parable, which means it's not talking about a fig tree. It speaks of someone that is resembled as a fig tree. And it's very interesting because um, here we are 2,000 years uh, after we were expelled uh, and we were gone. And yesterday was November 29th, Barry. November 29th was 75 years ago, was the day that the UN General Assembly voted two states for two people. And it's very interesting because uh, the Arabs rejected it. The Jews have adopted it for the most part. And, yeah. uh, and why? Because the Jews knew we were promised a homeland by God. 
The British Balfour Declaration promised us a homeland. The San Remo Convention adopted the resolution, uh, a resolution based on the Balfour Declaration. And when the UN was, was, was uh, founded in 1945, they said that all of San Remo resolutions of the League of Nations are now valid and effective. We are not here by chance. We're here by a divine calling, divine direction, yeah. and we're legally here, even legally when it comes to, you know, the, the international law. And it has to be very, very clear. It's the single most amazing thing that every Christian should look at and be amazed that, you know, our, our rapture is really around the corner. And it has to also be very clear. The only Christians that have a problem with Israel back in their land is though, are those who preach that God has forgotten all about Israel and that God has replaced Israel with the church. Yeah. Think about it. So here yeah. we are reading the most amazing prophetic portion of Jesus' te Jesus's teaching, and you see that he, he also made it very clear. That fig tree is coming back to life. That same fig tree and that fig tree Will, will be the sign that the end is very near for that generation. And so I'm, I'm a great, uh, you know, um, enthusiastic supporter of uh, the teaching that the fig tree is indeed representing national privilege of Israel. And I think that uh, it can be applied to many other things as well, but don't take that one from it. Don't take the most important yeah. from it because it is important. Yeah, Amir, you've got the king of the Jews talking to 12 Jews about an idiom for the Jews, but it's not about the Jews. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Uh, so, again, you know, these are our brothers and sisters in Christ who see things differently. And, uh, you know, Amir, I just taught a message uh, Sunday. We're going through First Thessalonians, and we hit uh, chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, and the timing of the rapture and all that. And uh, one of the things I wanted to make sure that was driven home to the congregation is that, you know, we don't throw stones at people who see things differently. And, you know, I kind of lightheartedly always kind of use the same little pitch that, you know, the mid and post tribbers are in for a very pleasant surprise. Exactly. Um, but I'm not going to say they're not my brothers in Christ or sisters in Christ because they see things differently. And that that's one of the things I think that uh, has really risen to the surface in these last days that is damaging to the church's effectiveness uh, in reaching a lost and dying world. We're always fighting about things that, uh, you know, do have uh, various interpretations. And, you know, if you have an interpretation about the fig tree and somebody has a different interpretation about the fig tree, the worst thing you can do about something that's non-heretical and is a matter of interpretation is to say they're godless and going to hell. And, right. you know, I have been condemned to hell more times than I can even count because of my position on the pre-tribulation rapture. And uh, that's just not what the church is supposed to be all about. So, exactly. yes, there are those who see things differently, and yet they can still be our brothers and sisters in Christ. But stone throwing uh, and church policing uh, are not a ministry that we ought to have as brothers and sisters in the yeah. body. And this is why we are his yeah. disciples by our love. Exactly. That's why I decline also so many attempts of people to have public debate with me about the timing of the rapture and about so many other <laughs> Because this, the purpose of all of these things eventually is, is never really to unite the body or to educate the body. It's, just, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it, it brings division more than anything else. Uh, it, but then when you say no, then you see the true colors coming out. Because then, oh my goodness, their responses, yeah. it, they're everything but filled with the fruits of the spirit. And then you know yeah, it was it's all about, it's a setup for you know, something else. And so I'm staying away from all of that. I don't have time for all of this. We teach the word of God. If you don't agree with us, fine. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. But I'm not going to stand on a platform as two Christians and, and start confusing people. Uh, people need to, uh, you know, be very careful to whom they're listening and, and what they're watching. Mm -hmm. If you only knew how many questions I get every single day where they forward to me a video and they tell me, what do you think about this? As if yeah. I have time now to watch yeah, the video. I get them too. For the most part, for the most part, the thumbnail of the video is enough for me to know that I should never watch it. 
It's yeah. not about anything that the Bible talks about. It's about pure sensationalism and cheap propaganda. It's about this fake yeah. Jewish Messiah that no one in Israel is, is even talking about, but Christians made a big deal out of it. It's about red heifers that nobody talks about it anymore because they're not red heifers. They're just calves. And they're not yeah. even at the age where they can be red heifers. And it's about... Um, uh, you know, some other things uh, that uh, this one said and that one said. And, and, and Come on, folks. Time is short. Let's let's deal with the gospel. Let's That's deal right. with let, let's stop the nonsense. So many so many YouTube videos are just not about the Bible and, and they're not about teaching and edifying and contributing to your understanding. And of course, uplifting and encouraging. All they do is create hysteria that makes us look so bad yep. uh, uh, you know where is it that the jesus said in this world you will have many tribulations please be concerned no he said be of good cheer <laughs> that's right be of good cheer for i have overcome this world People are looking at us, and when they see that we're dealing with nonsense, conspiracy theories, stupid things that I'm not even sure why Christians should even go there, these rabbit uh, holes that people are, just give the Bible, give the gospel, and, and, and just don't go there, and don't waste your time on it. Trust me, every minute you watch that video is you have a one less minute to live and to do to be able to do something else. And so just stay away from that. Um, we're Amen. getting close to Christmas. And one of the big questions everybody's asking, or a lot of people are asking, is Christmas okay to celebrate? Because I'm hearing a lot of different things. Every Christmas, I get the same Christmas crisis of people. And, and let me tell you once and for all, if Jesus could tolerate the Feast of Light that is not biblical, and it's not, and used it to tell people that he is the light of the world, then you can tolerate something that may be not biblical, but use it to tell them about the king that was born. Just take that opportunity, even though you don't feel like it's, you know, by the way, honestly, if the real birth of Christ was so important the bible would have given that to us if the real date it's not there because it's not that important That's right. if it if it's not that important who cares now if the whole world is celebrating on the 24th then you can make fool of yourself by saying no it happened on a different day or no i'm not don't celebrate it if you don't want it but i would say give them jesus during that day tell them what is the reason for the season? Explain to them. Be all about, as a family, my mother-in-law is uh, from Denmark. And we sit, that's her thing every, every year, is to sit as a family and have a meal and read the story from the gospel about the birth of the Messiah. And we let every member of the family read a portion. That's what it's all about. On Passover, Amen. we sit around the table and read the Exodus from, from Egypt. So I don't have a problem reading and, and talking about the birth of the Messiah. I don't know if it was on the 24th. I don't even care if it was. Who cares? The date, if the date was important, God would have told us that. But it's not important. What's important is that he was born. And what's important is that the Savior came a child was born unto us, and he is Emmanuel. God is with us. Wonderful counselor, uh, you know, mighty God, everlasting father. Amazing Prince thing happened 2,000 years yeah. ago. Why not making a mentioning of it? Absolutely. It's funny, Amir, because the devil sure is fighting hard to get the nativity scene off everybody's front lawn and off of public property. So he seems to see the value in uh, celebrating that. Uh, the son was uh, born, a child was born and a son given. So, yeah, I'm with you. I, I just think, you know, whatever day we choose to set it aside and to recognize that God sent his son into the world to be the world's only savior, to become a kinsman redeemer of all mankind. Um, and uh, those who believe uh, will experience the benefits and blessings of knowing him as savior and Lord. 
And uh, those th those things will last into eternity. And if there's anything that is worthy of celebration, it's the birth of Christ. Amen. And the Amen. promise made all the way back in the book of Genesis about one who would uh, crush the serpent's head as he bruised his heel. Yes. And uh, so, you know, it, I'm, I'm on the same yeah. page as far as that goes. Yeah. And it's funny, Amir, you answered the question that somebody, had, uh, Larry, had posed, and that's about those who want to debate uh, issues like the timing of the rapture. And, you know, I think what you said is what everybody needs to understand. Uh, I've seen lots of debates and been involved in different debates and made the mistake of answering debate questions online uh, a few times, haven't done that in quite a while, and won't do it because not once ever has anybody's opinion changed on the matter. And uh, so it's just really time spent away from doing what we are commissioned to do, exactly. which is go to the world and preach the gospel. And Amir Debbie wants to know about the, the feasts of Israel. Uh, she said she has heard you state that the four spring feasts were for the Jew and uh, the fall feasts will happen likewise. And of course, we know, you know, that Jesus died on Passover, fulfilled the Feast of uh, Unleavened Bread in the tomb and the Feast of First Fruits by being the first to rise from the dead and then the birth of the church uh, on Pentecost. And maybe you can talk about the fall feast a little bit and yeah. if uh, the what fall, their you know, fulfillment will be. It's important that you just said that the first four will fulfill in their chronological order. Uh, within few weeks, all of them were fulfilled. Okay, mm -hmm. that's exactly how the the fall feast will 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 be fulfilled, and this is why none of the feast is related to the rapture. They're all related to the Messiah coming or the, the Messiah uh, dealing with Israel, and 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 it's a wonderful picture of the the plan of salvation of the whole world. But if they are going to be also at the same order of the first four be fulfilled in their chronological order then he has to come back to Israel for them to, uh, on the Feast of Trumpets, then he will have to have them repent for, for their mistakes and wrong identification of Messiah. And then they will enter into the Millennial Kingdom, which is the Feast of Trumpets. So you have Trumpets, uh, Atonement, and uh, Feast of uh, Tabernacles all fulfilled in Israel, with Israel, uh, in, the, in the exact chronological order you see i have a whole message about the last trumpet the trumpet that we are dealing with when it comes to this the rapture of the church the bible says it's the trumpet of god it's the trumpet of god and it's not the trumpet of men in synagogues and and it's important that we understand that even when john was invited to heaven on on the fourth chapter of revelation and he heard a voice sound like a trumpet the whole description of 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 the rapture you can see at you know in the beginning of the fourth chapter of revelation and not only by the way that they haven't accepted him which means we had to change location up but also the the sound that was uh, there to welcome him so it's the sound of god a voice of an archangel it's not people on planet earth that are going to make any you know sound of any trumpet for him to come, but the Jewish people will celebrate the Feast of Trumpet right when Jesus will return, and um, and they will, um, of course, be together, see him returning, see the one whom they pierced, as Zechariah 12 says, repent and mourn, and then, of course, comes the amazing act of all Israel will be saved as. Romans 11 says, and they will enter, saved Israel, entered, enter into the millennial kingdom for a thousand years. And that's it. And then, of course, that feast of tabernacles that represent the millennial kingdom will be celebrated every year. And every nation will have to come and celebrate it in Jerusalem, as the latter part of Je Zechariah 14 suggests. Beautiful, beautiful things. I think uh, we lost Barry. I'm not sure why, but um, I think this is it, folks. We're almost there at, at the hour. So I want to thank you. This was a special Q&A of authors regarding our new book, The Essentials. It's not a normal Q&A where we talk about all different questions. 
Um, we'll do that one in a few weeks as well. But I want to tell you, folks, if you haven't gotten it, listen to this Q&A and understand why it's important that you get it, folks, even before it's released in a few weeks from now. And help us get this book to bookshelves in, in so many big uh, brick and mortar stores such as uh, Target and such as Walmart and Barnes and Nobles and even Hobby Lobby and others. We want people, mostly non-Christians also, to be able to be exposed to a book that uh, they will never buy if they, because they don't walk into Christian bookstores. Get one for yourself, get one for your family members, get it now. By the way, there is a dedicated website you can go to and read about it. It's called BibleProphecyTheEssentials.com. And uh, this is it, folks. Thank you for joining us uh, today. Thank you. God bless you. And shalom from Galilee. Pastor Barry, I think that uh, you're with us again. Okay. Yeah. You Was just... it only me that shut down? Yes, only you. Only you. Oh, gosh. Uh, but the Jew uh, covered up for the Gentile. Don't worry. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, I just thanked every, everyone that this is it, that we're at the end. Any last word you want to say, Pastor Barry? About yeah, and again, Amir, uh, it's just so uh, awesome to see so many people jump on board and uh, even some of the comments and understanding that, uh, you know, hey, it costs money to, to make a book and all that. And, uh, you know, that's that's the attitude that we are so grateful for. And that's the attitude we all ought to have. And, you know, our hope, as we you know showed in our little clip, is that this will will be helpful to people because, you know, you're out there working with people that what on earth is going on? And, uh, you know, did the, the, the Bible say this? Or someone told me that, that uh, this was all predicted in, yeah. in the Bible, you know, and, uh, and you'll have a resource to, to look up each chapter, uh, you know, goes from Israel to the church age, to the rapture mm -hmm. of the church, to the tribulation, to the millennium, to the great white throne judgment and into eternity. And the book is divided up into those sections. You can look it up and uh, answer questions. So I, I think it's, uh, I hope it's going to be a very helpful resource to everyone out there. And thanks to all who have been so supportive and uh, have jumped on board and pre-ordered the book. I mean, we really want to see it reach as many people as possible uh, because like Amir said earlier, it's a book with biblical answers. Exactly. So Bible prophecy, the essentials.com. That's the website. You can go read about the authors, read about what the book is all about. And then, of course, uh, there is a button there to pre-order. Please pre-order it. Let's get this book to the brick and mortar stores. Let's get unsaved people. Grab this book. Read the plan of God for this future and get saved. Hey, um, listen, um, I'm not doing as much as I used to uh, Middle East updates because I am updating nonstop on Telegram. And if you're not on Telegram, you're missing out 24-7 updates from the Middle East and around the world. So why don't you see how you can join our Telegram channel? The only channel is the one with more than 300,000 subscribers. Don't be tempted to follow anyone else because there's a lot of fake channels that are even asking for money from people uh, to subscribe. It's, it's a terrible thing. So follow yeah. the one that has 300, over 300, it's 319,000 subscribers um, and uh, be, get updated. And why don't we show you how you can do that um, as we say goodbye. Thank you, Pastor Barry. We'll do more Q&As together in the near future. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, get the book, Bible Prophecy, The Essentials. And for following me on Telegram, why don't you watch this short video? Thank you. God bless you. And by the way, Barry has a Telegram channel as well. Barry Stagner, you can find him there. Um, and uh, this is it. Love you. Thank you. God bless you. And Shalom from Galilee. Shalom. Join the Amir Sarfari and Behold Israel channel on Telegram. Here you will receive daily updates and audio messages from Amir. You can also take part in our community and reply with comments. Getting started is easy. Simply download Telegram from the App Store, then visit the Behold Israel Telegram channel in your browser. From there, click Preview Channel, then click Join. That's it. See you on Telegram.